Chances are, if you're an equestrian, you have always dreamed about having your own land where you can keep your own horses and see them every day. So what I thought I'd do today, after owning our own property for a few months now, is I just wanna give you a glimpse into the reality of having your horses at your own home and what that entails. It is raining right now, so this is just a good indication of rain, snow, sleet, hail, tornado, whatever. We're gonna be out caring for the horses. So I'm gonna go get Yoshi, cause it's time for him to eat, and I'm gonna take him down to the barn. Good morning, boys. Usually I'm out here much earlier when it's dark because I usually have to go to work, but since it's the weekend, I'm out here later, so Yoshi's probably a little mad at me. Tucker's gonna stay up here as Yoshi goes down to the barn to eat. One thing I don't think people realize when you own your own land is like you do everything for your horses. And I know initially you're like, oh yeah, I knew that, but I don't think people understand the amount of dedication you need and how much stuff you're figuring out on your own. So before, if I was at like a boarding stable and I had a question, you know, I could ask someone and they would usually help. But now I'm all on my own. So it comes down to my own intuition. Sometimes if I'm going to be out late, I'll have to remember, oh, I need to feed the horses when I get home or I need to figure out how to do it before I leave. And so there's just things like that where it's like this constant reminder of you have these animals you're taking care of now. And I just like to feed him down here just so like him and Tucker can be separated for a few minutes so they don't get too herd bound. So this is just a supplement with like biotin and zinc. And Yoshi's really mean about his food. I always like make him back up because he gets a little grumpy. Good boy. Grumpy pony. Another thing is, if you're gonna have your own land, usually you're gonna need another horse for your horse, like a companion animal. And that's why we got Yoshi, so he could be Tucker's pet. But not a lot of people think about that. Like now you have to care for a second animal and spend time with them and pay for them. If you're looking to get your own land, you always have to be aware of, I'm probably gonna need to get another horse. And on top of that, a lot of times if you just have two horses, that leads to herd bound or buddy sour behavior. So a lot of people will actually get three horses so that their horses aren't getting buddy sour when they're taken away from each other. Like Yoshi and Tucker are pretty good with that. Like they don't really have buddy sour behavior. Yoshi does not care whether he is alone or not. Real quick, I wanted to mention today's sponsor, which is our equine helper Etsy shop. We started putting together some really fun t-shirt designs and putting them on shirts. I personally would wear them. So you can go check them out by clicking the link in the description to this video. The holidays are almost here. So these are the perfect gifts for your equine friends. Or if you just want to ask something for yourself, this is what you can do. Another big thing I don't think people realize until they are solely responsible for their horse is like a horse's dietary needs and what goes into that and how much money goes into that as well luckily on our land we have a lot of grass which is good because we're probably going to get through the winter and not have to feed hay unless it snows but i did buy 25 bales just to have in case it snows and i had to put it in a place you know and store it and keep it dry another aspect is if you do have your own land and you do have a bunch of grass you're gonna need to be monitoring your horse's sugar just because too much sugar can be really bad for horses. And then there's just the aspect of when do I start feeding hay? Like if it's fall going into winter and your grass has started to die, when do you start feeding the hay? If you've never had to make that decision, you usually don't think about it. And so there's all these aspects of owning your own land and having your horses here where it's now you have to make the decision and be confident in what you're doing. When it comes to caring for your horse, another big part of it is also caring for your land. Like for example, fencing. I have fencing falling down. I'm having to remove all these vines so I can fix the fencing. One aspect of land management is taking care of weeds. Obviously you don't want your horse field filled with weeds. Not only do some weeds have high sugar content, which isn't good, but they can just be toxic and a pain and a nuisance to horses. For example, foxtail. So all this yellow grass you see out here is foxtail. Luckily my fields have enough grass that the horses won't eat the foxtail, but it does need to be managed. And there's just other weeds out here that we have slowly been working to rid the field of. So like pokeberry, which is very toxic to horses. We pulled out a bunch of pokeberry. And so that is a really time consuming thing, but it needs to be done just because I want my fields clean and I want them safe for my horses to be in. Yoshi's done eating and it usually takes him about 10 to 15 minutes to eat. I usually wait around on him, but now I'm going to put him back. This is our barn kitten, Smeagol. We have another one named Gollum. I just don't know exactly where he is right now. Smeagol likes to be carried only if I'm walking. 
kind of like a baby, likes the movement, I think. Also, big important information, poop management. Where's your poop gonna go for the horses? So that's our little poop pile. And I actually made a compost pile. I put like vegetables in there and stuff. My biggest personal struggle when it comes to taking care of our land is the fact that Rome was not built in a day. Everything that I want to do with our land cannot be done in a day. Here is where I ride right now. This is my arena. It's just a mode area. It's not even. It's really uneven actually. And so one thing I definitely want to do is grade this and put in a riding arena. So that's one thing. So chances are, unless you're super rich, when you buy your land, you're not gonna get land that's perfectly ready to go for your horses. The normal equestrian is an average person that works a normal job. A lot of times the land that we can afford needs some work. You know, we're gonna need to put in the barn and the arena. So. My arena is one thing I'm gonna be working on. Also a new barn. Our barn here, for a while we thought it could work, but it's just leaking and it's old and falling down. So I'd like to put in a new barn eventually, but that costs money. What a lot of people don't realize is when you buy land, you may not even be able to move your horses over to it right away. So for example, when we bought this land, a lot of the fencing needed work. We had fencing that has fallen down and it's covered in weeds. We can't really do anything about it quickly so we just put up temporary fencing that we'll have to do for now so we could bring the horses over but eventually like all this fencing is going to need to be replaced it's just so old and falling down when you go to buy your land you'll realize you have to make a priority list what is the top priority and what can you get away with for now so when we first moved in i was like Top priority, patching the fence for now so that we can eventually fix it in the future. A lower priority is putting in my arena because it's not something I absolutely need, it's just something I want. A lot of people have their horses and yes, they love to take care of them and everything, but we also love to ride, right? Like I love riding my horses. There's so many farm projects to do, like fix the fencing and everything so that I don't get to ride as much as I used to. But at the same point, if you're like disciplined about it, you probably can ride and it's nice having the horses right outside of your house. So even if I'm not riding, at least I'm seeing them and I can take them out and brush them and play with them and things like that. And like I said earlier, it costs money to put an arena in. In the beginning, you may just have to make do with what you have. So for example, we just use this semi-flat piece of land on top of our hill. And then in the summer, my husband would mow trails for me through the tall grass. I'm still able to ride. It may not be exactly in the environment I want to ride in, but that's okay because it's all a work in progress. So it is nice having my trailer. That way I can just go out whenever I want to and go ride elsewhere. I purchased my trailer before I got the farm, even before I thought I was going to get the land. And so I know like buying a farm is a big financial commitment and then buying a trailer. So it's one of those priority things too. It's like, what is your priority in the long run? A lot of people want to get their own land so that they can save money on board. But in reality, after doing this for a few months now, I realized that you're probably not actually saving any money. You're probably breaking even, like what you spend on board is what you spend each month just caring for your horses at your own house. That being said, I will always choose having my horses on my own land compared to boarding them somewhere where I have to drive every day and go see them. Remember the holidays are almost here, so be sure to go check out our Etsy shop by clicking the link in the description.